Thank you, Lisa, and thank you, Daniela. There was there were beautiful, poignant stories. They were heartfelt, but they were instructive as well. And I think that, as, as Lisa mentioned, I think the comments are testimony to the impact that you have made, just not just in this interview, but with the work that you have done. Mm -hmm. It's clearly born of experience and expertise, which I think when, they, when the two of those are combined, it's, it's an amazing outcome. So thank you. Um, while we do have Lisa around, um, I'm going to ask her to introduce a new resource or recent resource developed by um, the Centre for Cultural Diversity and Ageing, which is the Inclusive Service Standards um, in an, an inclusive service delivery. So, Lisa, I'll leave it with you. <clears throat> Thanks, Taz, for that. And um, I guess I'm uh, just reflecting on the, um, the whole afternoon with the conference and some of the key themes that have come about. And um, now that this is the final session, I wanted to, to wrap it up and to sort of give an overview of how everything that we've spoken about in this conference has really led to the idea of systemic change. And what we mean by systemic change is the fact that the entire system needs to change in order to support culturally diverse older people and their carers. And as Daniela mentioned, um, the importance of carers and, and supporting uh, not only the older person, but the people that are around them to be empowered and to be resilient, but also have their rights met and to have access to equal resources. Um, and the Centre for Cultural Diversity and Ageing has developed our inclusive service standards, which have been recognised by the Aged Care Quality and Safety Commission. Um, and those key standards are about how a whole organisation needs to work together to support the needs of diverse um, older people. Um, the key principles of an inclusive approach are outlined in this um, um, in this slide, um, such as a commitment to diversity. So often we see from, from the leader's point of view that diversity isn't even mentioned and it's implied that everyone is treated equally, but there, it's not like that. There's a difference between equality and equity. And uh, that's what we are promoting here at the centre and at the PCAP Alliance at large. We need methods that identify and remove barriers. So, um, you know, things like the, the language services panel discussion that we just spoke about, that was how do we remove language barriers? We need a flexible, responsive and adaptive style, like Elizabeth Drew has mentioned, that we need to engage with consumers through inclusive feedback loops. It can't just be a one size fit all in order to promote a fair go. We need knowledge about the local community. We need to know who our people are in our local community, who are missing out on their service, and who's actually in our service as well. And we need a big picture view that supports all consumers, multiple and intersection, intersecting characteristics. Um, and again, guess what, what Tom was talking about around the complexity of culture and communication. So the Centre for Cultural Diversity and Ageing thought that we wanted to um, highlight the good practice examples out there ac across Australia. And we've actually now launching two of our films. The first one is Commitment to Diversity and Inclusion by Leaders in the Aged Care Sector. And the second one is innovative approaches to inclusive practice by leaders in the aged care sector. So we thought we'd, we'd create these resources in order for the sector to learn from each other around what is happening in this space. Um, and we're just going to show you now the second film, um, this one here, Innovative Approaches to Inclusive Practice by Leaders. Um, and we hope that you enjoy it. But before we show you the film, I thought I'd highlight the actors in the film. So, of course, we've got Elizabeth Drew. And, um, an amazing, inspiring leader in the aged care sector. Her quote in one of the films is, we need to understand the social de demographics of our communities, how they're likely to change over time and how we can adapt our services to suit them. We've got Aileen Thomas, who's the Primary Health and Innovation Manager from Career Up Regional Health Service, who states, we want to highlight the unconscious bias, uh, privilege that we have as health professionals. Angelique Dufrut, the health promotion practitioner from Career Up Regional Health Service states that the people that she consulted with in a, in a consumer group stated that they were achieving what they wanted because they were feeling connected to other people. Samantha Jewell, um, the executive manager for marketing, engagement and diversity at LifeView states, not everybody has the same life story. So it's about understanding that person's journey and how they came to be with us. And they've just introduced their rainbow tick to support LGBTIQA plus communities. And Anita McCauley, the social support manager at LifeView states, we had one resident whose family was bringing munches in for them. We had a conversation with our chef and we are now serving beautiful Sri Lankan munches. 
adaptable, flexible, responsive. And finally, Joy Lego, who's the Chief Executive Officer for Multicultural Aged Care Services Geelong, who states, it all comes down to the importance of human connections. We will move mountains to make that happen. So this is a virtual clap to all the actors in our film and to celebrating good practice. Here at the Centre for Cultural Diversity Ageing, we are open to hearing stories, the challenging stories and the good practice stories. We are open to bring that back to the department. Share your stories, whether it's language classes or um, a story from a consumer, just one story from a consumer that was perhaps challenging for you or that you saw, you saw a positive outcome. We're always open to sharing stories. So without further ado now, we'd like to launch our film, Innovative Practices and Inclusive Innovative Practices and Inclusive Services in Aged Care. Thank you, everyone. Homes are becoming more multicultural and diverse, and we make sure that we can support all residents to feel socially included. We have over 50 multilingual staff speaking 30 different languages, working at all levels of the organisation. They bring valuable cultural knowledge and language skills to our homes. Similar to our approach of supporting and embracing LGBTI residents, we run programs and events where residents and staff celebrate their culture and we explore the country, the language, the food, and other important aspects of different cultures. Everyone gets really involved. People are very proud to share their culture and it helps create better connections. I would like to think that we are known as an organization that shares our learnings and information with others. We value research as it helps us to better understand our multicultural and multi-faith communities and we have others who come to us for support and guidance. It's not unusual for us to be approached by a community leader and ask about what we've done and achieved and how they can do the same. We have always been very strong on community projects and initiatives, and we use them as part of our action community research to create innovative ways to work with communities. Through our diversity planning processes, we identify access and equity issues, develop activities to trial, listen to feedback, and then use the findings to enhance our service offerings. We have a four-year diversity and inclusion strategy that seeks to strengthen our focus on the diverse groups within our population. It also raises the importance of striving for an inclusive society. One priority in our strategy is our work with Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people. We identified the need for our intake staff to undergo specific asking the question of origin training. This supports the staff to understand the importance of asking all clients if they are Aboriginal, Torres Strait Islander or both and how to do it in a consistent and culturally inclusive way. Being culturally inclusive from the first point of contact will help the client feel comfortable in the service. Knowing if they are Aboriginal or Torres Strait Islander can ensure we learn about their cultural needs and their preferences and be able to deliver appropriate services. It is very important for us that our consumers have an opportunity to have a voice and we believe they should be heard in their first language as much as possible. We employ multilingual staff, which can help consumers feel comfortable to ring and speak to their case manager, social support or respite coordinator. This helps empower them to be engaged in their care. We don't just look for multilingual staff, we want to know they understand different cultures, that they will respect all cultures and beliefs and want to support consumers to be empowered. Here at Max, we're actually driven by our community. They tell us what they want and need, but we also must connect with new and emerging communities to understand what they want and expect from aged care. After being here for 25 years in this role, 
We often find the multicultural communities now come to us and ask, what do I do, where do I go, how do I start the process? Being a regional town, Geelong is not that big, so it allows us to connect with the community, the local council and other major players and local faith groups. We have a connection with 44 different ethnic communities and they bring a wealth of knowledge and support to us. We are always trying to find new ways to connect with our clients and the broader community. One of our favourite projects aims to engage multicultural seniors with their community to share their wisdom, reduce social isolation and to challenge ageism through intergenerational connections. We are continually building on these initiatives. We have a mobile aged care information van. It is set up with a barrister and one of our multilingual workers is available to go to various community centres or parks and have a chat about services and provide any information that people need. This has been a good way to reach out and connect with the community. Ageing can mean that people lose connection and that can be worse for people living with dementia. Through our planning process, the demographics told us that Kui Rup has an ageing population and is one of the areas most at risk of dementia. We've partnered with Kadenia Shire Council as a part of the Dementia Friendly Community Project and started off with a community consultation. There were a range of people from the community who explained to us what their needs were and the barriers they have experienced in the community. Following that, we have had some training with Dementia Australia and established a social support group for people living with dementia and their carers. I think what made it such a success was the way that relationships organically developed. At first, everyone was a bit timid. They weren't talking, but after a bit of time together, they were achieving what they wanted, which was to be connected to other people. Our vision is culturally diverse individuals living life to the full. To meet this vision and the needs of our communities, we realised it was essential for us to develop a dementia specific unit. One that could respond to the cultural wellbeing and language needs of people from multicultural and multi-faith backgrounds. Could you take a moment just to reflect on caring for a resident who is living with dementia, has lost the ability to speak their learned language and reverted to their native tongue and have no one to communicate with. That's what we wanted to do here at Max, be able to care for those people in a culturally sensitive and linguistically appropriate manner. So we established a little 14 bed dementia specific unit and we can now provide that, the connection to culture and language for people living with dementia and that has just been so very special for us to do. We also look for other resources to help us form connections and to communicate with our residents. We use communication cards from the Centre for Cultural Diversity in Ageing, which have been amazing. We offer them to all our residents. We use them in their room and have them located around the home. They are picture based as well. So for those residents that are living with dementia, they may not recognise the word, but they've got the picture to assist as well. We had one Greek lady who loved using her cards. Her English was really good, but she walked around the home with them on a walker for days. Just so proud that she could communicate in Greek. The communication cards have been a really big help in overcoming language barriers, but we are also concerned about residents' cultural needs from a lifestyle perspective. We had one resident whose family was bringing lunches in for them. We had a conversation with our chef and the family, and we are now serving beautiful Sri Lankan lunches. Another resident has a certain time of the day when she prays. The staff all know not to disturb her during that time. We run a small house model, which means that staff work with the same residents and know their likes and preferences. We are always encouraging residents and staff to share their thoughts and ideas with us on how we could do things differently or better here at Max. It helped us come up with some creative solutions to tricky situations. With the onset of COVID, we wanted to do something to make sure our residents remained in contact or connected with their families and friends. We went in early and hard with our restrictions, way before a lot of other people did. I said to our Director of Care, we have to work out a way to get this human connection happening while we're in lockdown. From there, she went into a wellbeing meeting and someone to, said to her, do you think we could convert a shipping container? 
It was just as simple as that. We just took it and ran with it. We happened to have a builder who was working on site, who has done a lot of work for us at the time. He said, we can make this happen. But it was not just a shipping container that just had four walls. We called it our visitor pod and it's fully decked out with furniture, heating and cooling and made to feel all warm and cosy. We made it look like it was an inviting place to visit, but a safe one. We put ramps in so that people in comfort chairs could go out and visit and it's been an absolute godsend. The visitor's pod has been available seven days a week from 10 a.m. to 7 p.m. It all comes down to the importance of human connections. If we can play a part in facilitating these face-to-face -face catch ups and enabling valuable family relationships to continue, then we will move mountains to make it happen. There has never been a more critical time to be innovative and responsive.